Hey everybody, this is George from DinosaurGeorge.com. If you've got a question you want to ask me, go to my website, DinosaurGeorge.com and click on the Ask Dinosaur George page. Remember, we get a thousand questions a week. It is impossible to answer them all. So here's some advice for you if you've never written before. Keep your questions short. Um, and I don't mean like just one sentence, but sometimes we get these questions that uh, cover up pages. And I'll tell you, the folks that go through them, they don't even have time to read that many, so they'll just delete them. Um, and the way we answer the questions is it's not necessarily who you are or where you're from. Uh, it's really more of a matter of luck. I mean, they just kind of go through page after page and they just randomly read some. So. If you've emailed me and I've never responded, don't take it personally. It's just that they, we just get so many questions. All right, let's get into it. Joe K. from Mission, uh, British Columbia, Canada says, Do you think Supersaurus is bigger than Brachiosaurus? Well, Joe, nice to hear from you, first of all. Um, they're two different body styles, and so it's difficult to say who is bigger. Uh, when we talk about bigger, uh, if we look at a giraffe and an elephant and you ask somebody which one is bigger, some people may say the giraffe because he's taller. Most people would say the elephant because he's got more mass. So, um, Brachiosaurus is certainly taller in my opinion than Supersaurus. Uh, Brachiosaurus being a more upright dinosaur and he's massive. Supersaurus being a longer dinosaur, but if I had to choose between the two, in my opinion, when you uh, include mass, I think Brachiosaurus, I think Brachiosaurus is bigger. That's just my opinion. Um, I'm sure a lot of people will disagree, um, but uh, that's that's just my opinion. Here's the thing I want to mention while I'm while I'm speaking about this. I do read your comments that you guys post on um, on uh, uh, YouTube. I do read them, and for those of you that disagree with me, man, I welcome that. I really do. I, I like to see that you have different opinions. You don't have to always agree with me on everything I say. So if somebody disagrees with that, I'd love to read your opinion, and I'd like to know why. Don't just say you're wrong. That, that to me, is, is incredibly rude. But if, if you disagree, I'd love to hear your reasons why. You let me know who you think is bigger, Supersaurus or Brachiosaurus, and explain your reasoning why. So, Joe, my opinion is Brachiosaurus, but I'd also like to hear from you, Joe, uh, who you think is bigger. All right, Ken from Gardner, Arizona asks, did dinosaurs sleep? Ken, that's actually a very good question. That's a question I've never gotten from anybody before. Sleep is something that's required so that the brain literally has time to kind of shut down. That's really kind of why we sleep. We don't sleep so that the body can rest. We could sit still and get rest. Sleep is really something necessary to help the brain. And the higher the life forms, the more brain regeneration is needed to allow the brain to recover. So we need a certain amount of sleep. Now, dinosaurs don't necessarily have really big brains. So the question is, did they need to sleep? Um, I would guess that they probably did, but there's one exception, and that I believe would be the really big sauropods. I don't think they required the same amount of sleep because simply their, their brains were not really that big comparative to body style. I think it may have been possible that they may have taken really short cat naps rather than long-term sleep, like we sleep, think of sleep. But uh, that's a very good question. Nobody's ever asked me that. All right, Rohan from Adelaide, I think it's pronounced Adelaide or Adelaide, South Australia. Who would win in a fight between Deinonychus and Velocir Velociraptor? Rohan, that's a very good question. In order to answer that, we need to look at their skulls. This is the skull of a Velociraptor. Now, in the movie Jurassic Park, they made them look giant, but they're really not. This is a relatively small dinosaur. This is the skull of Deinonychus. Simply by looking at the two size differences, that alone would help you understand who would be more effective in a fight, in my opinion, simply because of size. They both have the same basic weaponry. They both have these really dramatically sharp recurved teeth. They both have relatively large eyes. This is the eye socket. Uh, they both have that. You look at uh, Deinonychus. Deinonychus also has very large eyes. So you look at those two factors and you realize that they both have 
uh, the same basic skull weaponry. Then you look at their feet, they have the same design, that uh, foot design with that big recurve claw. So in my opinion, the only factor that would determine who would win in a fight between the two is simply size, and that would be Deinonychus. All right, uh, Michael from Niagara Falls, Ontario, Canada. Another one from Canada says, Hi, George. One creature that has baffled me is the saber-toothed tiger, or cat, and its long front fangs. Ever since I was a kid, it always bothered me that I could never really seem to figure out how they used them or what function they had in their daily life. I really appreciate an outside opinion to shed some light on this mystery. Thanks for reading and hopefully I'll have more questions soon. Well, Michael, thank you for taking the time to write to me and it's a very good question. Uh, the saber-toothed cats, Smilodon is the biggest of the bunch or the one with the largest teeth. How did those teeth function? Well, number one, his jaw was a little different. When you look at him head on, what you'll notice is that his big sabers, the big teeth, fit on the outside of the jaw. They have one function and one function only, and that is to puncture big wounds in the animal. They're not effective. You know what's really cool? A little walking stick just drifted down from the tree on, on top of and landed on my Deinonychus. So I have a walking stick. I don't know if you guys can even see him. Probably not, and I can't zoom in, but there's a little walking stick walking on my Deinonychus. How cool is nature? All right, getting back to your question. His, his fangs are designed to puncture holes. You see, he could open his jaws approximately this wide, literally fitting my head inside of his mouth. Then those teeth would be used to puncture two enormous wounds, and then he would back those teeth out. And then, using the front teeth, he would take little tiny bites of his prey. So he's very effective at killing big game, but it probably took him a long time to eat it because those fangs were great for killing, but they really got in the way of, uh, of eating. So that's how I think he used them. Imagine he used them to stab and then he didn't use them anymore. He simply ate with them in his mouth, of course, kind of getting in the way of things. That's sort of how I think they were used. Um, but that's a great question, Michael. I'm glad to hear from you. Okay, finally, Taylor from Monroe, Utah. Hey, DG, how are you doing? I'm doing great, uh, Taylor. Taylor said, hey, what did you say on episode, episode 100 about Tyrannosaurus Rex and Spinosaurus? <laughs> when I shot, in case you didn't, if you don't know what Taylor's talking about, uh, look for episode 100. It was a, a joke that I did. I received so many questions, the same questions over and over again, and the number one question I get is who would win in a fight between T-Rex and Spinosaurus? My answer while I was talking, uh, and again, I'm not going to spoil it for you that haven't seen it, but my answer was that Tyrannosaurus Rex would win. I've always felt that his sheer size and his jaw strength, in my opinion, would have been too much of an advantage that uh, Spinosaurus could not have overcome. But if you watch it, uh, you'll understand why uh, Taylor's asking what I was saying. All right, everybody, that's it for this time. If you've got a question, go to my website, dinosaurgeorge.com, click on the Ask Dinosaur George page. While you're there, check out DGTV. Uh, my first episode is now up and live, and I'm getting ready to start shooting the second episode. I've been getting some great uh, um, ideas from you guys, and I'm going to incorporate Incorporate that into them. Until next time, take care of yourself and take care of the people around you. If you see somebody that needs a little help, stop and help them. Nothing will make you feel better about yourself than helping somebody else. And for all of you young people out there, make sure to practice your reading. And for everybody, practice good manners because those make the world a much nicer place. I'll see you soon.